so in question 37 we are going to cover interest rate risk management we have callers we have options we have futures and we are going to do multilateral netting so this are the things we are going to cover in this question right before we go to the case study i always tell that read the requirements first so part a calculate the intra-group transfers which are focused to occur for the next period second part of a is discuss the problems which may arise with the new arrangement okay and then part c part b okay we have based on the choice of options on futures or callers so we have callers on future uh, sorry options on future which messy company is considering and assuming the company does not face any basis risk recommend a hedging strategy for the 25 million receipt so it's a receipt foreign receipt and hedging strategy on options and callers out of this support your recommendations with appropriate comments and relevant calculations 14 marks right so first we are going to solve a and we are already going to read the relevant pass which is relevant for a so armstrong is a multinational group of companies today is first september this is very important because based on this we have to know when are we going to take the dates which future we are taking right which options on future so the treasury management at messi one of the armed groups subsidiary based in europe has just received notification from the group's head office that it intends to introduce a system of netting to settle balances owed within the group every six months previously intergroup indebtedness was settled between two companies concerned okay so the uh, predicted balance in owing and owed to at the end of the february as follows okay you can see we even have done this question a similar question was uh, done in 36 question 36 right if you haven't seen that video please go and check this is very similar to that only no difference so we have to exchange convert the currencies right now let's see the predicted exchange rate. so of course exchanges have to be given to you right there in 36 question 36 if you haven't seen that video we have used mid spot rate because they told here we are not going to use mid spot rate here we can use exchange rate as it is we are given settlement will be made in dollars please note this because what happens is when you read the first requirement just see here we have been told that uh, armstrong is based in europe so we are thinking that they might use euro but no this is why you have to read the full requirement and then make a decision just reading half the case study is not enough so here they have given you the settlement currency that is dollar so your answers have to be in dollar everything needs to be converted to us dollar okay the currency of armstrong group the parent company settlement will be made in the order that the company this is very important settlement how the settlement will be made it will be made in the order that the company owing the largest net amount in dollars will first settle with the company owed the smallest net amount in dollars so dkr is danish crown sar is south african rand us is united states dollar and euro is euro okay so now we are going to do the intergroup transfer and also we are going to discuss the problems with the new arrangement for three marks so let's see how it has been given before we go and see let's see what they have given top tips don't rush into hedging questions without reading the scenarios carefully a number of candidates assumed that because europe was mentioned the netting would be euros, which was not the fact in the case sometimes what happens is just because it is based in some country don't assume that this is the currency read it what is the settlement currency in case if they don't give you the settlement currency then you can take euro because it is based in euro in that case but here they have told that dollar is the settlement currency and the examiner's team comment is very few candidates demonstrated the knowledge to calculate the effective cost of the caller hitch. That means candidates are struggling with caller. They are not good enough with caller. Don't worry. So we are going to cover caller here. And this is the marking scheme. I'm only going to show for the first two part. Right. So first you can see dollar amount owed and owing two marks. Total owed and owing three marks. Net amount owed one month. One mark and payment and receipt two marks right so first you need to convert to dollar then you need to show the total owing and total payment and total receipt then you have to show the net payment or receipt then you have to uh, give the settlement right and one to two marks for discussing the problem with this kind of arrangement for part b i will show the marking scheme later when we do part b okay so now let's go so this is how a is right we are going to write everything here this from the question itself we can take out 
right and this also we can take all these three columns you are just copy pasting it right even in the exam also when you have to write if you are writing in a cbe platform you just have to take it and copy paste it right and uh, if you are writing in a paper like march is a paper base so you have to write it down write down all right just don't write the currencies just don't write the converted currencies in uh, dollar otherwise you will get confused who is going to home please write you have to write these columns owed by home or to home what is the local currency and after conversion so this is after conversion and i hope that you know how to convert using the currencies the table has been given to you how you have to convert right so that we are not going to do here and finally after this after you have written this okay this step this one we are going to put this here who is going to home let's see the first one i'm just going to show you the first one and rest all you can do so here as I told you, the table O2 will be like it will go downwards and O by will go across, right? So when you see the first one, Armstrong is owing to whom? Or is owing to her answer? Armstrong. Let's go to Armstrong. It's here. It is owing to her on how much? 12.17. The first line. Just see this one. Because Armstrong is owed by. He is the one who has to pay whom? Horan. So it will be this. Likewise, you should be able to read and put the number in the correct column and the correct order row, right? That you should be able to know. Once you are done, you are taking the total, right? So this total, if you see this and this, you can write it in a vertical way also. You can write it in a horizontal way also. In 30 equation 36, we wrote it in a vertical way. This is written in a horizontal way whatever method you felt you can do right both are correct the same only just the way of showing it is different you present in a different way so owed by first we are going to say owed by that means whatever you're owed by you add how you are going to add you are going to add downwards that means owed by for this one 3.88 plus 2.11 that's how you are getting 5.99 and when you have to calculate O2, you are taking this figure you are adding like this 2.98 only that's it and for the second one how you got 23.66 you are adding 3.88 and 19.78 so when it's o2 you are adding across when it's owed by you are adding downwards that's how you have to add since it's owed by it will be in bracket o2 will be it's a receipt so it will be without bracket and net whichever is more right you know to find the net let's so you can see that the this one and this one this two are net payment and this to our net receipt so what did that term told that the one who is paying the highest amount right if you have forgotten let's go and read here again okay settlement will be made in the order that the company owing the largest net amount in dollars will first settle with the company owed the smallest net amount in dollars right so who is owing the largest and who has to be over the smallest let's see under the terms of the arrangement massey has the company with the largest debt which company has the largest debt this one massey largest debt even 3.01 is a debt but compared to this this is bigger like largest debt will pay her 5.22 million yeah he is having the smallest receipt compared to armstrong so Massey has to pay Horan 5.22, right? So, because that's 5.22, maximum you can pay 5.22 from this 11.57. You cannot pay the whole 11.57 to Horan, right? So, Horan will pay 5.22 as the company with the smallest amount owed. Then, Messi will pay Armstrong 6.35 and Giffen will pay Armstrong 3.01, right? Giffen, right? This one will pay. Armstrong because the one who is owing has to pay the one who is receiving always right the full amount he is going to pay the 3.01 now out of this 11.57 already 5.22 went to Horan so what is the remaining that is 6.35 the balance you minus 11.57 by 5.22 you will get 6.35 this balance will be paid to Armstrong Messi will pay to Armstrong right and always check your net payment add add this right add your payments payment 
and add your receipt it has to be equal that's how you check whether it's arithmetically correct or not your payment have to be equal to your receipt if it's not then you are wrong somewhere now let's go to the second one they are saying about the problem right what are the problems of this way of arranging this multilateral netting so these are some issues and this you can memorize also because in future if you get a question what are the problems of multilateral netting you can write answers from here pick out points from here and write so armstrong may have problems with any of the governments of the countries where the subsidiaries are located object to multilateral netting we saw in question 36 why government may not allow multilateral netting to happen so sometimes government may ban it or restrict in the subsidiaries company so it will be problem for the parent company right however this may be unlikely here why is that let's see the new system may not be popular with the management of the subsidiaries because of the length of the time before settlement up to six months up to six months is a big time so not only might this cause a cash flow issue for the subsidiaries but also the length of time may mean that some of the subsidiaries face significant foreign exchange risk so the system may possibly have to allow for immediate settlement in certain circumstances for example if transactions are above a certain size or if a subsidiary will have a significant cash flows if amounts are not settled immediately so now let's go to part b part b we have to read the case study because we haven't read it right so it starts from here right it's a quite a lengthy one so you have to mark the important points okay so the most important transaction which Messi is due to undertake with the company outside the armstrong group in the next six months is that it is due to receive 25 million from bell bell Slay company on 30th november so it's going to receive 25 million receipt it's a foreign receipt in six months time right on on 30th november these are the important dates and today is first of september i told you in the beginning itself they told you the date please underline the date so messi company's treasury manager intends to invest this money for six months until 31st may okay 30th november to may 31st may six months okay so when it will be used to fund some major uh after investing of course it will be used to fund some major capital expenditure that is not a requirement we don't need that information what they are going to do after six months and how they are going to invest and blah blah because we only focus about hedging the 25 million receipt after that after investing what they do with that 25 million is not our concern so however the treasury manager is concerned about the changes in interest rate so this is an interest rate uh manage risk management not exchange rate so predictions in the media range from a 0.5 percent rise in interest rates to a 0.5 percent fall see whenever this type of question is given to you right when it's a rise or a fall you have to show the impact of both the rise and the fall in the interest rate you have to show the impact of both the rise and the fall in the interest rate not just rise not just fall because they told both fall or a rise both needs to be shown and it is by 0.5 percent rise is also by 0.5 percent if it, it will fall also by 0.5 percent because of the uncertainty the treasury manager decided to protect Messi by using derivatives the treasury manager wishes to take advantage of favorable interest rate movements therefore she is considering options on interest rate future see he want to take advantage of favorable interest rate movement this is only possible in options only possible in options or callers but in callers the benefit is limited if you have studied callers properly right so interest rate so therefore they're taking options see don't get confused most of you might think this is interest rate future this is not interest rate future this is options on interest rate future that means basically it's interest rate options only you can say it's not future it, even though it might look very similar to future so that you have to understand properly right or interest rate caller so there are two things as possible method of hedging but not interest rate future Messi company can invest at LIBOR minus 0, uh, 40 basis point and LIBOR is currently 3.6%. This is very important because on this you are going to increase by 0.5% or decrease by 0.5% and this is the invest. How much are you going to invest? LIBOR minus 40 basis point. Now the treasury manager has obtained the following information on euro futures and options. She is ignoring margin accounts. Okay. So three month euro future is 1 million euro contract. Tick size is given. Tick value is given to you. Okay. So this is very important because you have to find the number of contracts. Take value has been given to you. The tick size has been given to you and you have been given September, December, March. Okay. Now also you are given the options. Since it is option on future, you will be given some information of future. Right. That you have to remember. Because you need it for your options. Options and futures are very similar. They work in a way. Once you understand future, you will understand option also. The only difference in option is that premium is there. 
that's it the rest all the working everything is same so options on three month euro future is same if you see it is same as uh, your future and option premiums are in annual percentage you have been given call you have been given put and you have been given two exercise price this and this i have told you that if they don't mention which exercise price if they give you two exercise price you have to use show the outcome under both the exercise price whether it's call and put we'll see later when we come to solve this question so it can be assumed that this okay this line will always be there always it is repeated right whether it's there or not you know it is right they don't have to tell you that but still they have told you it can be assumed that the settlement of the contract is at the end of the month yes and it can also be assumed that basis diminishes to zero at constant maturity at a constant rate and that inter time intervals can be counted in months this we all know even if they give or they don't give so it does not matter whether they give it or not we know it that basis will reduce when it comes towards the maturity and uh, blah blah so now we have to hedge this 25 million receipt using both options and callers and have to give our recommendation which one is the best in short okay so first we are going to start with options right before that we need to find number of contracts right so need to hedge again a fall in interest rate fall in interest rate why because we are investing we are not thinking of borrowing this is an foreign receipt we are going to receive so we care about what fall in interest rate because if interest rate falls we are going to receive less right whenever it's a foreign receipt call option buy call option always it's a foreign receipt that's why if it's a foreign payment it's a put option if it's a foreign payment it's a put option if it's a foreign receipt it's a call option memorize this and this is a foreign receipt and require 50 contracts how many how 50 contracts 25 million was the receipt divide by 1 million because contract size is 1 million hmm. multiply by this portion is there which this portion was not there in your exchange rate risk this is there only in your interest rate rate risk if you see okay this is only in your interest rate risk this is not there in your exchange rate risk 6 into 3 how is it 6 into 3 what is the hedging period what is the hedging period it is 6 months right Hedging is six months. And what is the contract of the future? Only three months. It is standard. It will always be three months only. So six months divided by three. It is that's why it is into six divided by three. You are hedging how much how many months you are hedging it for? That divided by your future uh future contract so it is only it's only three months it's always three months futures right so the denominator is fixed it will be three only right what will change is your this part it could be six months it could be five months it could be 12 months anything so based on that it is 50 contracts exactly 50 contracts right so which contract are we taking march december how many contracts are we there we have been given uh, September, December, March. Which one are we taking? September, December, or March? We are taking December. If you are saying September, it's wrong. We are taking December. We are taking December. Why? Why are we taking December? because of this because they are going to invest on when 30th November so if we take September September is already expired next comes December so December only we can take and if you take the next one also we can take but then basis risk will be there we should always take the one which is closest to the investing or the borrowing period so this is 30th november the closest to 30th november is december 
not March. So we have to take December contracts. On, on December contract, we should always find the closing future price. Right, we have to get the basis. This basis is very important that you have to know the basis because you have to find the closing future price. You have to find the closing future price basically. So this is the formula, the future price minus the current price. That is the first September, you will know the basis point. Right, so what is the future price of December? Future price of December is uh, 95.76. This minus, what is the LIBOR currently? It is 3.6 percent. So if it is given in percentage, in price it will be 100 minus 3.6. 100 is always like that. Whenever you are given a percentage, you should know how to find in, a, in terms of price. Let's say this is December 95.76. If you want to find this as a percentage, right it will be 100 minus 95.76 so it is here that's why if you see this minus 100 minus 9 uh, minus 3.6 it is minus 0.64 because your september price is more than your future price so that's your basis what is your unexpired basis 0.64 divide by 4 how divide by 4 how divide by 4 we are taking the contract when today is 1st September we are taking December contract so December contract will end 30th December right the future December future so from 1st of September to December it's September October November December four months right out of this total four months November to December we have to take November right November is a hedging period we are taking on November so November to December one month so that's why it's one over four that's why it's divided into one over four and you are getting this unexpired basis it will be negative only okay now we'll go to the option the amount received so under options what will be the amount received it will be LIBOR minus 0.4 percent because they told that amount received will be LIBOR minus this is the rate only Diver minus 0.4 percent into 25 million that is a receipt and do 6 over 12 because it's the hedging period is six months okay so now we are going to show the two situations what happens you need to show this is the way you have to write what happens when interest rate increases what happens when interest rate falls down so first we are going to see what happens when interest rate increases from by 0.5 percent that means from 3.6 to 4.1 right 3.6 you add a 0 0.5 so 3.6 plus 0 0.5 is 4.1 percent right increase by so what will be the expected future price when interest rate increases it will be this how they have calculated this 100 minus 4.1 percent because now after increasing by 5 percent it will be 4.1 percent you deduct it minus this unexpired basis this also have to be deducted don't forget that unexpired basis and you are getting your future price right here also it will be same here also it will be same but the exercise price just check the two exercise price they have taken from the table itself you are working under the two exercise prices so in first exercise price you are not going to exercise second also you are not going to exercise they said no no why hmm? that okay so this is a call option okay think it like that this is a call option in a call option you want to buy at a lower price so just check which is having a lower price the future or the exercise price the future price is having a lower price so why will you exercise the option exercise price is more even in the second scenario exercise price is more compared to future price so you will not exercise the option under both so now in, the, in this sit, uh, situation right after this remember you have to show this must you have to show it what is the outcome right in the interest so you are not exercising the option now we'll see how much interest we are receiving right this is fixed okay 25 million this is also fixed it is for six months only this will change this rate and it will be minus 0.4 percent because we told that LIBOR minus 0.4 percent at that you are investing so LIBOR at this at now after increasing the 3.6 by uh, 0.5 percent will be 4.1 that's why 4.1 minus 0.4 okay 
because LIBOR now is 4.1%. LIBOR minus 0.4%. That basis point, 40 basis point is fixed. Only LIBOR will change. So LIBOR minus 40 basis point. That's why 4.1 minus 0.4%. Before it was 3.6 because now interest rate increased. So under both, it will be same only. The interest received because we are not exercising the option. But we have to pay the premium. Remember that this is a receipt and we have to pay the premium. So pay, premium will be deducted. Right? Premium when you take that this we have taken from the table and multiply by 25 because 25 we have to hedge and number of contract 50 50. Same. Only your premium will change. We'll see the premium. So this is the table. Okay. If you see the table here. Okay, so this two are the exercise price and we are going for the call option. So under call option, we are going for the December. So this is the exercise price. Sorry, I mean the premium. It is given as 0 0.182. Remember that they told the option premiums are in annual percentage. That means it is 0 0.182%, 0 0.032, uh, right? So it will be. 18.2 and 3.2 percent this is shown in decimal when you show it in percentage it will be 18.2 and 3.2 that's why you're multiplying here by 18.2 and 3.2 just check where here see 3.2 and 18.2 as a percentage right you are taking and you are deducting Remember to take the correct premium. This is at uh, exercise price 97 and this is at exercise price 96.5. So at that exercise price, you have to take the premium. You might go wrong here also. This is this is the problem happens when we are dealing with two different exercise prices and we have to take premium for two different exercise prices. Most of the time, we just take one exercise price and the same premium only we write under both. So please don't do this mistake and we are getting the net receipt. If you see we are getting a higher receipt under this exercise price. Right. So when you take the interest rate also, you should get a higher interest rate under the second one. How are we getting this effective interest rate? Please make sure that at the end you calculate this effective interest rate. How do we get it? So the formula is this. 458,500. This is the receipt out of how many? 25 million. 1, 2, 3, into 3, into 12 over 6. It was 6 months, right? You just do the reciprocal of it this time. 12 into 6. And you will get the percentage. Into 100, of course. Right? So you will get it as 0 0.03668 convert into percentage it will be 3.6 percent right the same way for the second one you will get 3.52 percent that's how you get now there is alternative solution i'm going to teach you this also in case you might have to use one of them maybe as a percentage or maybe but this result you will get same the only thing is this you're working in euro in the amount value this you're working as a percentage right as an interest rate so that is the only difference but alternative solution will go through this i will only show you for the first scenario that means when interest rate increases for the others also it is given even in callers it is given the alternative solution even it is given when interest rate uh, falls down what happens i'm not going to show you each time the alternative solution only this is the first time so that this also this once you understand you can replicate into the other scenarios also so exercise price 100 minus the price the price was 97 in the first case that's why it is 3 percent 100 minus 97 and for the second one it was 3 9.965 uh, something yeah 96.5 that's why it is 3.5 percent here future also when you take the price we call cal we got the price as we got the price as 95.74 so 100 minus 95.74 will be same in both that's why it is 4.26 percentage this time we are dealing in percentage this time we have dealt in value amount money value that is the only difference when you do interest rate hedging questions you should know to deal with both 
because you don't know whether you have to work at the interest rate or not and exercise price of course the result will be same only right you see doing an alternative solution does not mean that your uh, no will become yes here also you should not exercise the option right because because this is when you come to the interest rate you might have uh, this question when you do an interest rate question like this you might ask me this question that why we are not exercising because three percent is lower this is a call option you told that we have to exercise when it's a, at a lower price call option see th this is not in price this is an interest rate so you are investing what do you want to do you are worried about fall in interest rate that means you want higher interest rate the higher the better it is because you are receiving you are not paying remember that when you are borrowing when you are paying only you will be concerned about high interest rate that time you will pick low interest rate but but this is investment right so you will you will be concerned about fall in interest rate you want higher interest rate so you will choose the one which is having a higher interest rate so higher interest rate is here this and this under both the scenario the future price is higher than exercise price you will not exercise the option so this is the way you have to think this is the area that's why i told you that i'm going to teach you this alternative solution otherwise i could have omitted it and told you go by yourself but i know most of you will be struggling in this point because i already told you that it's a call option you have to take the lower price but it is not price this is interest rate in this case when you do this one the first way when you take the euro in pound in amount you are working then you have to take price lower price but when it comes to option sorry interest rate you have to think like that you are investing you want high interest rate so you will choose the one with a high interest rate so same way interest received right it will be 3.7 and 3.7 only because 4.1 is the LIBOR minus 40 basis point gain on uh, premium right this the way it is given on the table you are going to take it because this time it is the what this as it is from the table you can take because this is the interest rate now so you are getting are you getting the same interest rate just check right when you round up you are getting the same only you will always get the same interest rate even if you do this method or the, the other method alternative solution you will never get different effective interest rate under both the method you should get the same interest rate please make sure that you understand both the method when you practice you do the, both the method but in the exam you should only do any one of them this you should remember in the exam you should do any one of them but when you practice you should know both because in case you forget one at least you will know the other one right the more ways you know solving a question the better it is for you in the exam always remember this so because if you know one method only and if you forget that method only in the exam what will you do right there's no other way for you to solve this so and check also whether you're getting the same interest rate or not if you're not getting that somewhere something is wrong and when you convert this percentage again you can convert into this just check you're getting the same same i will show you same just see here and here same only you will get the net receipt so the net how will you get net interest net uh, receipt it is 25 million in the second alternative solution 25 million into the effective interest rate that is 3.668 percent into 6 over 12 because it is for six months you should get this right and please mark this percentages 3.6 percent 3.52 percent because later we are going to put a summary and we are going to compare which one is highest which one is lowest and all now we are going to go to the other scenario what happens when interest rate falls from 3.6 right 3.6 was the original so it falls by 0.5 percent that means 3.1 percent everything remains the same only the numbers will change now the expected future price is 100 minus 3.1 100 minus new LIBOR 16 basis point will be same so this time your future price is this so therefore it is this and this but your exercise price will remain the same now you see exercise price just check under the first scenario this is call option you want to buy at a lower price so future price is giving you a lower price of course you will not exercise the option but when you go to the second scenario your exercise price is lower than your future price this is a call option you will exercise the option you will exercise the option so 
and this gain is 96.5 minus 96.74 okay the difference is the gain that is 24 0.24 so basis point 24 only now we'll see we'll work out in pounds and alternative solutions and i'm not going to show you you can just go through it the way i have done for the first one so here it will be 25 million same into six months okay LIBOR now is 3.1 minus 0.4 so we are getting the same gain an option under the first one it is we are not getting any gain because we are not exercising the option when you don't exercise the option you cannot have any gain but in the second one we have 24 into 25 into 50 million because 24 gain we got 25 is the amount we have to hedge and the 50 is the number of the contract premium premium still will be 3.2 and 18.2 it will be same call option right into 25 into 50 so same premium will be deducted only and the net receipt we got effective interest rate also you should be able to calculate now the way we have done for the first one and alternative solution also is the same just the amount is changed before it was 4.1 now it is 3.1 and now you are exercising one option and you are not exercising the other that is the only different rest everything is same now we are going to the caller using a caller okay most of you might get very scared thinking about caller. Oh my God, it's very tricky, it's very risky. Right? I don't understand caller and all, but no worry. Through this question, you will get a clear understanding of caller. Okay, so what happens in caller is, this is an investment, okay? In caller is, you buy a call option and you sell a put option. So, you all, so when you buy a call option, you are doing the normal way only. This part you understand. The premium was uh, 0 0.032. So you buy a December call, normally how you were doing for the before two at 97 exercise price. Okay, that exercise price, I will tell you how to decide which exercise price to buy the call at this. And sell December put. In caller, you have to do this. Caller means buy call, sell put. The same, same month, December, it has to be December only. So you are buying one call and you are selling one put. Okay, just check it's buy it's sell you are not buying december call and buying december put please check the words it's opposite you buy december call you sell december put but exercise price will be different this exercise price is 96.5 for 0 0.3 this is the premium net premium received is 0 0.091 why see the premium received is how much when you sell december put that means you are getting uh, premium receiving premium which is 0 0.123 minus when you are paying you are buying december call you are have you have to pay the premium of 0 0.032 so the premium will be 0 0.091 it will be premium received because your net uh, your premium uh, the amount you are receiving is more than the payment right okay so now Let's go to the table and try to solve it. Just check here. When you are buying the December call, this is the exercise price. When you are selling the December put at 96.5, this is this. This one. Right? But how do you know which exercise price to buy and which exercise price to sell? There is there. It's not that you just take anything as your wish. That is a there's a there's a logic behind this also. So you think why? Because if you see in terms of price, you see that you are buying at a higher price, selling at a lower price, which should not be the case. Then why is it like that? Okay. So the reason is simple. When you are going for a caller, you have to buy at what? Convert this 97 and 96.5 to the percentage. This will be 3%. This will be 3.5%. You will buy at 3%, you will sell at 3.5%. That is the logic. Convert into interest rate. You will buy. Caller means what? 
there is a ceiling there is a floor ceiling and there is a floor so collar is like this you come down and you go up so this has to be three percent which is 97 this is 3.5 percent which is 96.5 so you have to buy at the floor and you have to sell at 3.5 percent it's always like that for collar you buy at a floor rate you sell at a ceiling rate so you buy at a lower than sell at a higher rate buy at 93 percent sell at 3.5 percent don't look at the price when you see the price you will get confused because it's 97 and 96.5 97 is more in fact so net premium is received right now so this is the advantage the advantage uh, of using collar is option you have to pay a very high premium but in collar your premium is reduced because you are setting a floor and a ceiling to that that's known as collar you are doing two things you are buying call selling put right don't get confused with floor and uh, ceiling floor just floor just ceiling is a different thing and collar has two things it's a different thing right so what happens now we'll see in the under collar when interest rate increases to 4.1 percent your future price will be same already the way we have calculated for the what happens when interest rate increases or falls down with the exercise price even your this and this also will remain same exercise prices the older thing is remember this is buy call this is sell put what happens to your exercise option you are not exercising under first option why because you are buying call you want to buy at a lower price so lower is future price second sell put you want to sell at a higher price right always whenever sell put is they want to sell at a higher price so which is higher price exercise price right 96.5 is higher than 95.7 for you will exercise you will definitely exercise and the basis point is again it will be it will be 0.76 just check 96.5 minus 95.74 now we'll check what is the interest received this interest received will be same right of course it will be same under this when you buy a call but there's a loss on exercise you are exercising now when you sell the put so what happens is you're losing this much 76 is the loss 25 and 50 so it's since it's a loss it will be in bracket why it's a loss on exercise when because just check you are buying at 97 you are selling at 96.5 there's a loss right selling put you are giving the option to sell to someone else option to sell you are giving it to someone else so that person be will benefit from this three point and three point five percent that person is going to get the benefit you are not getting the benefit for you it will be loss if it is exercised because you are buying at 97 selling at 96.5 for you it's a loss right that person's benefit right he might be benefited but for that person's benefit it will be loss on your side so it will be loss all the time it will be loss only always so 95 and the premium premium this time you are receiving so you are adding or not deducting and it's 9.1 we just saw it is 0 0.091 that means 9.1 percent same 25 receipt and 50 contract only and net receipt deduct your loss and add your premium this is your net receipt effective interest also you should know how to calculate the effective interest the way i have shown for the before one and this is alternative solution right just go through it and see whether you can solve it or not if interest rate falls okay the only difference is you're not going to exercise you're not going to exercise just check your exercise price you have to buy call you want to buy at a lower price exercise price is more you will not exercise sell you have to sell at a higher price so your higher price is future you will not exercise so interest receive will be same okay there will be no loss on exercise because not exercising the option premium will be same you're receiving and net receipt right an alternative solution you should be able to go through it and this is the summary always try to put your answer after you do when you have so much of calculations to do so many calculations rise fall rise fall rise fall please put it under summary at the end it's very easy for you to go rather than going through pages and pages and searching for answers it's better to put everything in one table so that is very easy for you to compare and write the answer and this saves a lot of time
what happens when interest rate rises what happens when interest rate falls another three scenarios we'll see which is giving you the highest percentage this one which is giving you the lowest interest rate uh, when interest rate falls which is giving the highest one so the situation is just turned around when interest rate falls, caller is giving you the benefit. When interest rate rises, exercise price at 97 is giving you the benefit. We'll see what they have to write. Just writing the summary is not enough. You have to write this line. This tables need to be there. Right? So the caller gives a significantly worse significant result than either of the options. Right? If you see if interest rate rises, we'll see what happens when interest rate rises. Just see. 3.52% and 3.03%. It's very less compared to 3.67 and 3.52 that's why they are saying that caller is worse than either of the option if interest rate rises because why see they have given you the result also reason also why it's like that why it's worse off because massey cannot take full advantage of the increase see when interest rate increases what is your concern always go back and ask question this yourself what is my concern my concern is if interest rate falls down because i'm going to receive right so if interest rate falls down i am hedging but what happens if interest rate increases it will be benefit for me so i can take the full benefit of that using what options but not callers in callers it will be limited the benefit because there's a ceiling to that benefit there's a there's a ceiling above that i cannot take the advantage but in options there is no upside i can take the maximum gain possible so that's why caller is not giving the full advantage when it increases. It is marginally the better choice if interest rate falls. Yes, when interest rate falls down, caller is a better advantage. Because when you have because interest rate falls means you have to hedge, you know, you're worried. So, so when it falls down, caller you have to pay a lower premium. Options you have to pay a higher premium. That's why caller is better when interest rate falls down. Now, based on this, your recommendation. So the recommendation would be to choose the option with the 97 exercise price because we are having the highest under the when interest rate increases even we are having the lowest when interest rate falls but that low is not so much just check 2.67 to 2.79 it's not so less but when the benefit when you check 3.67 to 3.03 benefit is high so it seems that 97 exercise price is good that should be the option which has a cheaper premium also if you see this has a cheaper uh, premium it has 3.2 percent premium go to the table and see 0.032 whereas the other exercise price has 18.2 percent premium right unless when interest rates are virtually certain to fall so if interest rates are you are very certain that it will fall go for the caller that time you cannot take 97 exercise price but if interest rate increases keep on increasing 97 exercise price is recommended because it has a cheaper premium also so your c your recommendation could be anything in this case they are saying 97 exercise price you could say caller you could say caller because you could say that caller is giving up even though it's giving a worse advantage under interest rate rise but when interest rate falls caller is giving a benefit so you can write uh, something like this right you can write anything your recommendation is your recommendation you don't have to exactly write what is there in the answer provided that you can justify so that's it for this and now we i'm going to show you through the marking scheme of part b how it has been marked we have been completed with this question now we'll see see recommendation to purchase call that you have to purchase call is one mark you have to please you have to specify whether you are it's a call or a put you are purchasing call or you're purchasing put number and the month of contract number of contract 50 contract month of contract december contract one mark calculation of base is another one mark never forget calculation of basis option contract calculation one mark see option ccc i'm sorry it's four mark option contract calculations already one option contract needs to be used with the justification for choosing this exercise price lose one mark if no justification four marks callers approach and calculations five marks comment and conclusion itself is two to three so you cannot lose this marks right so that's it for this question i am i hope that after this video you should be able to handle interest rate risk management the caller and more effectively and in a better way 
and also you should be an expert in multilateral netting by now because we have already solved two questions on that 36 and 37 right so best of luck and do take care and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed and so that you get tuned to more of these videos thank you and take care